From Los Angeles, it's the Tom Micah Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. Here we are together again on the radio. We appreciate your patronage. Appreciate your business. What can I say? And um, in this hour of the program, I want to expand on something that we've made reference to on the air, but... um, Maybe you can uh, help us to uh, broaden our perspective on this issue. I have pointed out to you many times because I, you know, I, I have a personal trainer and I go to the gym three days a week and sometimes a fourth. I'm in there Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Sometimes I'll add a Saturday or a Sunday in there. I'll just go in for an hour, getting the job done, working hard doing this now for seven months, and I continue to work at it. I'm a work in progress, baby. And when I'm at the gym, I see chicks in there. Now, you know what? Guys aren't so obvious about this. But I see chicks in there who clearly have just either gotten dumped or they decided to break up with somebody, and then they go to the gym. Now, with the chicks who got dumped, what they don't realize is had they gone to the gym while they were married, or while they were living with the guy, he might still be there. But that's not the only thing that happens, okay? People do many things after they uh, break up or they get a divorce. Let me give you some examples. Ever been with somebody who doesn't like socializing? Like doesn't like going out with your friends? Doesn't make friends of their own, whatever? And suddenly after you break up with them, oh, they know how to make friends. Are you kidding? They know how to dial a phone. They know how to write down somebody's address. They know how to call a person up on the phone and make an appointment to see them. You know what I'm talking about. The people who stay there like living in isolation. Like they're just sitting in the ringing silence of their homes. Ever known anybody like this? They're married and they are like... You know, like, I've known people like this who live up in the hills, right? They get a beautiful house in the hill. And they're living up there all day long, talking to nobody. They just become completely isolated from the whole world. And you say, why don't we ever go out to have dinner? Why don't we ever make any uh, friends? Why don't we do anything? And they just have no interest in doing that. And then later on you see them, after they uh, got dumped or they split up, and you see them, oh, they, they become social butterflies. Are you kidding? Yes, they've got lots of friends. They're dating all the time. They're attending all kinds of events. They're always on the go, always on the move. And you say, wait a minute. Why is it when you were married, you were like uh, Elvis? You were living up there all by yourself, not talking to anybody. And now you are uh, Mr. or Miss Social. Why? Ever think to yourself that uh, maybe had you uh, gotten off your ass and dialed a phone number once in a while, made some uh, social occasions happen, created some parties, did some things? Ever think that maybe if you did that stuff while you were married, you might still be married? You might still be with somebody? 
And this goes both ways. People did uh, good things when they were married. Now they do bad things. Bad things when they were married. Now they do good things. Uh, things that are uh, bad for you. Now you do things that are good for you. Uh, it, it goes both ways. For example, I know people who were completely suburban and, you know, they drank uh, eight glasses of water a day and they ran on their little treadmill. And then when their marriage broke up, suddenly they're out boozing every single night, out getting hammered every night, trying drugs they've missed out on. I heard about that ecstasy. I read about it in People magazine. I've been wanting to try that. Boom, they're trying ecstasy. Bam, they're out there uh, shooting up. They're out there, uh, you know, they're doing every kind of, uh, uh, every kind of roofie, everything. They're out there doing drugs. So they went from, like, living a suburban lifestyle to suddenly going crazy. You got the people who, while they were married, were effing around, and now that they're single, they're living like monks. <laughs> you got the people who were 250 pounds when they were married, and now they weigh 125. You got the people who are so depressed about being single, they were 125 and they got divorced, now they're 250. But there are things that people do after they split up with somebody that maybe they should have done while they were together. Maybe they would have been together. How about with sex? People who uh, suddenly are all kinds of experimental, right? Oh, yeah, I'm trying uh, this new position, and I'm trying this uh, lubricant, and I'm trying these gadgets. And I'm, I, You know what? Maybe if you had uh, tried that stuff while you were married, maybe the marriage would have survived. But you didn't. Now that you've split up with whoever you were with, now all of a sudden, oh, yes, you are... You are daring. You are outrageous. You are trying anything once or twice. I have seen people in bad relationships, and I've certainly had my share. I'm a man who's been divorced four times. Uh, but I have seen people in bad relationships who just sit there and do nothing. They don't want to stir up the pot. They're afraid to try anything different. They're afraid to even talk about their problems. So they kind of sit there and stagnate. They sit there frozen in fear. What do I do? How do I say I'm bored? What do I... You know what? Can I just recommend to you that what you do is um, if you're married to somebody and, like, you feel like it's going nowhere and nothing's happening and nothing's changing, how about you say to the other person, you know what? Let's shake it up. Let's do something else. Let's try something different. Let's pick up the phone and call some people. Let's add some new characters to the play. I just read about this designer drug in a magazine. Why don't we try it? You know, I'm not saying all that stuff is right to do or good for you or anything. But I'm saying is, why do you sit there being jealous of other people who have good lives while you are sitting there feeling bored or trapped? And then why is it you wait until you break up with someone? This is a failure to communicate. This is a fear of talking to the other person. Too many people are afraid to say, you know what, I'm so bored that if it keeps going like this, I'm going to leave. Or we communicate so little, I feel like I don't know you. In a relationship with one person I was with one time, I actually said, uh, are you afraid of anything? What are your fears? And she was like, huh? Do you have fears? Do you get sad? Do you get angry? And she looked at me like I was nuts. And I said, you know, I'm just trying to get to know you. Because sometimes I feel like I don't even know you. You should be able to ask a person you're with anything. You should be able to say anything to them. And if somebody asks you a question while you are with them, you should be prepared to respond to anything. Otherwise, you get into these positions where you sit there frozen in fear. Oh, my God, if I ever say that I was bored, and I don't know what will happen. World War III. If I ever say, uh, I don't like your friends, or let's make new friends, oh, my God, it, the new friends might come in and ruin everything. I mean, you should be able to talk about this stuff, but we don't. So what we end up doing is we toss the relationship in the trash and we start fresh, on the next one, not realizing that we will make the same mistake over and over and over. 
And my hand's in the air. I'm raised my hand, okay, because I've done this, all right? I know. That's why I know, because I've done it. I'm not saying I'm perfect and you're not. In fact, I've done this. I've gotten to a point in my life where if I'm having a relationship, I will say absolutely anything to the other person. And if I can't say absolutely anything, I'm with the wrong person. It's that simple. If I can't say, you know what, I'm bored. If I can't say, you know what, sex isn't as good as it was. You know what, I need sex every day. Every day. Not getting it. I need to get it every day. Every day. If I can't say these things to the other person, I'm with the wrong person. If I can't say to the other person, I need, you know what I like? I like you to come to bed naked. No t-shirts, no flannel pajamas. I like naked. I don't want you coming to bed in a Samuel Adams t-shirt. I want to see your body. Don't knock on Sam Adams, but come on. I want you to come to bed and I want to feel flesh against flesh. That's what I want. If I can't say those things, I'm out. Out. So that's my attitude now. The perfect person is someone you can say absolutely anything to. Anything. That's how you know you're with the right person. You can say anything to them, and they won't flinch. They will respond. Nothing I hate more than being with somebody and having them uh, looking at me. And I say, is anything wrong? No. Something's wrong? No. I'm looking at you. I know you. And something's wrong? No. And something is wrong? And they don't tell you, and they don't touch you, and they just look at you like you're crazy. What do you mean? I don't know what you're talking about. You know, come on. Stop. But what many people do is they just kind of silently suffer with stuff until the next relationship. And then they figure, well, next time I'll get somebody more appropriate. Next time I'll be with somebody I'm happier with. Next, you're always starting to think in that mode. And that is why people go to the gym after the relationship is over. You know what? If you went to the gym and lost those 50 pounds while you were with somebody, they would be proud of you. They would be watching you working at something. They would say, you know what? You must love me a lot to be going in there working off that weight. You must love me a lot to be dressing better. You must love me a lot not to drink so much. You must love me a lot to like not smoke anymore. You must love me like you know people would see you making these changes. But so often in life we see people do these things after the relationship is over. You see the person you used to be with, they look better, they lose weight, they dress up, they cut their hair better. They socialize more. They, they, they stop being bitches. They stop being a-holes. They stop being jerks. I mean, you see them and they're like completely different people. They didn't feel free to be different people when they were with somebody or they didn't feel motivated or they just took the other person for granted and they just continued to engage in the same behavior that alienated the other person in the first place instead of trying to turn it around. So have you ever been with somebody and later on you saw them and something about them changed that had they changed it while you were with them, maybe you'd still be with them now. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I think you need to step back and, and double check your priorities. Oh, please. My priorities are that we start making things fair in this country for men. Because men have gotten their asses kicked. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. All right. The ways the people have changed since they were with you. And who knows? Maybe the relationship would still be going on. Had they changed when they were with you? Peter on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you, man? Hi, right, Peter. Hey, well, listen, I was dating a girl for about two years, about uh, three or four years ago, and she refused to drink. She would not uh, touch the stuff. She got pissed off when I drank. She, uh, I had, whenever I wanted to, to go drink something, I had to go hide 
like, and, and have a beer. So even if I wanted to go out with my buddies and have a beer. Right. And uh, it got to the point where finally, you know, she just wasn't, she wouldn't let me have any fun. She didn't want to have fun with me, but she was so, she was so hot. Uh-huh. And uh, it turns out that I had to, uh, I had to you know, uh, DTB and uh, get rid of her. And uh, that was, uh, that was it. And it comes out that two years go by and I see her and she is a fun loving girl. Now she, uh, she drinks all the time, you know. She's going out with the girls, having a beer, and it's like, you know, I mean, I could have had that if I maybe if I would have stuck around, she would have uh, she would have changed, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Maybe if she had changed, she would have stuck around. You mean? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, you know, she 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 uh, all she had to do was try the stuff. I mean, I'm not advocating being an alcoholic or anything, but you know what? It loosens you up a little bit sometimes, and uh, it's nice to have fun once in a while. Yeah, have some goddamn fun. Exactly. I can't tell you how many times, I mean this, and it's not just any one relationship. I can't tell you how many times I've been with people and I've said, I'm not having fun. Right. Fun. Remember fun? Not, hey, you We're know. We're not having any. Exactly. So it's, uh, you know, it sucks, and now you just kick yourself and say, hey, you know, what if? You know, and you know you're not getting that back. You're right about that, Peter. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Is our telephone number. It's Catherine on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Catherine. Hey, I'm calling to the, I listen to your show quite a bit, and I mean that I disagree with you a lot, but on this subject, I had totally agree. I have had two of my long-term relationships, one of which was a marriage, where the guy, right after I break up with him, they fix the thing that was a huge problem. Like the first one, this guy, I was with for 10 years, and after about five years, I broke up with him because he went from... 170 to about, I don't know, 250, and all I could wear at that point was overalls. I, I just couldn't handle it. It was just, you know, a couple years ago, I was like, dude, I can't take this. It's gross. So I break up with him. I see him two months later in the park. He's tan. He's fit. He looks great. We hook up. We get back together again after about six months. What happens? He instantly gets fat, totally fat again. <laughs> and my ex-husband, the dude... He he totally was irresponsible about money, okay? And I was really serious about my marriage, very committed and all that. But after three years of him completely stuck in my wallet dry and spending money on, you know, stupid taking the guys out for beers when I didn't have enough money to buy, you know, baby food or whatever, um, I finally had it. I divorced him. Guess what? After I divorced the guy, huh, guess what? He can make a living for himself all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Amazing. It's just amazing. Now, if this so, keeps yeah. happening, it, now, I'll just be honest with you, you know, if this keeps happening, maybe it's you. No, so, because you know what, I I just tell people flat out what I need now, and you know I'm just pretty firm about the way things are going to be. I mean, there's certain things that I, I don't know why. Pe- I mean, this is men, women alike. I don't know why people are afraid to say, "Look, this is what I need. This is who I am. This is what I'm going to be." And that's what people don't do. You know, listen to the section earlier about um, guys with fat women, and the guys are like, "Well, no, I haven't told her." Well, dude, maybe you should tell her. Yeah. You know, maybe you should just give her a chance at least to to take off the weight. Instead of just, you know, putting up with it and then dumping her. I mean, boys, I want you to pay attention to this uh, if you're listening in right now. Uh, I have had to have con- uh, the conversations and relationships that go like this. Okay, hockey, not giving it up. I have, I have season tickets. I go to the games. That ain't going away. Baseball, I like baseball. I don't like it as much as I used to, but I like going to the ballpark. Not giving it up. Uh, boozing with the boys, I like doing that. Not giving it up. Why are people so afraid to step up to the plate and say stuff like that to the one they supposedly love? The Tom Likas Show. What? This is the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Chrissy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Chrissy. I just wanted to thank you. I took your advice about communicating with my partner, mm-hmm. and I told him that um, sex was boring. I was extremely bored. We weren't having it enough. It wasn't good enough. And I told him that either it had to get better or I was leaving. And last night, he came home with a very good surprise for me. Oh, really? Really. Wow. He came home with some restraints and some chains and a blindfold. And a whip. And he got the job done. Oh, he got the job very well done. Wow, wow, wow. But you see, you might have said nothing and broken up with him and then hoped the next guy would do better. 
actually, I learned from my marriage. <laughs> but the, rea you know, the reality is it's you. It's not the other person. They, oh, exactly. Because exactly. in most cases, when you tell the other person exactly what you want, they'll give it to you. Exactly. But so often, we're afraid to say exactly what we want. Well, I am very, very, I love to experiment. I love watching him have sex with other women. Really? I love picking up other women for us. I cook. I clean. I'm a stripper. I come home and hand him my money. Wow, wow, wow. This man is like God to me. Wow. And, yeah. So, but so it, was worth, it was worth taking a risk and telling him you were bored. Absolutely. And I would tell every woman to do the same. And as of the fat women, I just tell them to go get a treadmill. That's right. Step up on the treadmill, ladies. Because I thought for a while that the problem was me. And so I went on a diet, and I've lost like 10 pounds. I have about 15 more to go. And, girls, if you need any help, 500 calories a day on the treadmill. Oh, absolutely. No matter how many minutes it takes, no matter what speed you go, 500 calories a day you work off on that treadmill. I do a two-hour workout and a low-carb diet. Look at you. And I've already lost 10 pounds in the last year and a half, so I've lost 35. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I've got like 15 more to go, but I'm good. good I'm you. a dancer. I have a great test on me. I've got no complaints. Wow, wow, wow. So, but thank you, Tom. Well, I I'm doing this on behalf of Dean. Next time things aren't working out at home, Dean is ready for you. Well, he's 33. I don't date a man under the age of 30, so I'd have to take you up on that. Perfect. Can you take me out with a screaming orgasm? Here you go, Chrissy. Oh, oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas, how you doing, buddy? All right, Robert. Thanks. For a long-time listener, first time getting through. Uh-huh. And I had to get through on this one. I have a female, it was my wife. Exactly what you're talking about is what I went through. Mm -hmm. Three things, three issues with her. First thing was I could never get her in a thong underwear. Really? She, she has the ass to die for. I could never get her in a thong. Now we're gone, separated, and that's all she freaking wears. Mm -hmm. That's it. And it's like unbelievable. I want to tag that ass more now than I ever have then. <laughs> did you ever ask her? I mean, yeah, are you, right. you, did you ask her why she didn't do it then and she's doing it now? Uh, no, since then I have not asked her then. But, I mean, even then, while we were together, I we purchased one. She tried it once, and that was it. She never tried it You know, again. it's like I, I bet the guys who have been uh, with women who lost 50 pounds after the divorce, you'd love to walk up and say, why didn't you do this when we were married? That's the thing. She's always had a great body, even after our first son, our only son, excellent body. Well, she's yeah. wearing a thong now because, you know what, if you don't wear a thong, you can't pick up guys. She already had you, yeah. and that's what's going on here. You know, women don't treat you like they're single and they're trying to entice you. They treat you like they've already got you. And I know a lot of men are guilty of doing stuff like that, too. It, but it, it's like, you know what, you should treat men like you're dating them. Exactly. Exactly what you're saying is 100% right. Uh huh. The other thing was, is I could never get her into racing, uh, you know, NASCAR racing, watching it, anything with me. And now she loves it. She goes to the races and everything. That's what pisses me off. I, I go, wait a minute. If you were doing that with me, look how much happier we would have been. Wearing a thong out to Fontana with you, everything would have been perfect. Exactly. Uh -huh. I swear, every man, every woman needs to listen to this station. I was one of those guppies that would freaking full-on kiss their ass, uh, suck on their toes, open doors, flowers, everything. My cousin told, turned me on to you ever since then. No way. Lycus 101 works. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> Tom like his show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. We're talking about the things people would never do for you when they were together with you, and now that you've split up with them, now they're doing them now. Let's say hello here to uh, Matt on the Tom Likas show. 
Hey, Tom. Matt. How are you doing? Do you care, Matt? Always. Doing great. Yeah. Good deal. I'm trying to find a place to pull off here. Just want to say, uh, one of my ex-girlfriends, I found out after she broke up with me, she, uh, she cheated on me with my brother. Well, when we were dating, she wouldn't do anything besides lay there. Well, come to find out after, after we broke up, my brother came up to me and he's like, hey, do you mind, you know, if I kind of mess around with her? I go, go ahead. She wouldn't do nothing for me. Well, she came up to me and, uh, said something about, or he came up afterwards, like, man, she's pretty wild. I'm like, why? Well, me and buddy of mine double teamed her, and one in the front and one in the back, and kept going to town. And I was like, you got to be, you know, she would do is lay there for me. Well, and well, about three months later, I finally met up back up with her again. And she wanted to get a little frisky with me, so I asked her, well, let's go do something. And I had set it up with a buddy of mine, just just kind of have them in the corner and in the closet. Well. She did not go for it. <laughs> did you tell her that you knew that she'd done it with someone else? Yeah, actually, I told her like a couple days later, and she's like, she was totally embarrassed, didn't know what to say. And I'm like, well, oh, what, what's the deal? You know, it's like you'll go to town with anybody else, but why not me? And she's like, well, I was just set with a certain style with you, and you're just didn't want to go any further. You were too nice. And I'm like, what do you mean too nice? You know, I was just kind of... I see, that's a lack of communication, because you'd be nasty uh, just like anybody else. Well, yeah, I was willing to do anything. For... Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you were. Matt, thank you. Ross on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Ross. Hello, Tom. What's up? Said, how you doing, Tom? How oh, you doing? I couldn't hear you. I'm doing great. Man, I need your help desperately. I feel like you're talking to me today about everything you're saying. I've been with this girl for about two years now, and I can't be honest with her at all. I'm forced to lie about everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's, she's, the reason I got with her in the first place is because she's beautiful. I'm talking about ass, face, she's fine. Mm -hmm. But she's like a church girl. She don't drink or smoke. So even when I hooked up with her in the first place, it had to be a lie, the kind of person I was. Mm Mm-hmm. It's everything now. I've been with her for two years, and I still, you know, I still go out and kick it. She's at home. I'm lying about where I am. I can never be honest with her. Mm-hmm. It's and it's like I know that this isn't the girl for me. I know that, you know. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how to get to get away from her now, because I don't want to break her heart completely. You know, I feel ah, oh, it's, it's terrible. You know. Well, Ross, I mean, breaking up is never easy, but uh, when it has to be done, it has to be done. You know, when you got a when you got a toothache, you got to get the tooth pulled. But, man, she's so fine, and, like, I've already dedicated two years is a long time, you know? Ross, you're only 23. You're too young to be saying, oh, I've spent two years with it. You know, two years is nothing compared to how long you're going to live on this earth. Yeah, that's, that is true. But I'm, what I want to try to do, see, the other things you were saying was to come clean with her. I'm thinking, if, you know, I come clean, and I'm like, hey, you know what? I want to go to the club. I want to go and kick it. You know, come with me, you know? But she doesn't necessarily, it's tough, you know? Well, I mean, you have to be up front. And th- that way, uh, the worst will happen is she'll break up with you. And that then you, won't be, br- then you won't be breaking her heart. That would make it so much easier on me. If she All right, well, then tell her. Put it to her. To that, that's one of the great things about being up front with people. If you don't like breaking up with people, if you're afraid you're going to hurt their feelings, you know, the easiest way to do it is to be up front about the stuff you're not talking about. Then if they want to break up with you, they'll do it. That's, I never even thought about that. That, that right there would the worst that will happen is she'll do everything you want. <laughs> oh, no, that, no, that would be even better if she, if she started kicking it. That would be even better. Well, there you go. Oh, wow, Tom. Don't put it to her as an ultimatum. You need, this is what you need. You, you're going to have that in your relationship, uh, whether it's with her or without her. Basically, I can't be a pussy. I have to step up to the plate and lay down the law and tell her this is what's going on, take it or leave it. Well, that, yeah, that's exactly what you have to do. Wow. I appreciate it, Tom. Hang on a second. Uh, Juan, what did you want to say to Ross here? Hello, Tom. Hello, Juan. Hey, man, I got to tell this dude, if he wants to break up with her, just start drinking and getting high in front of her, dude. You know? Yeah, that's hey, that's true, too, you know. But, see, I don't want to, like, break her heart like hurt her like that, you know? Hey, man, you're a pussy, man. Uh, let me come by. I'll help you out with it, man, you know? Hey, no, no, no. I, gotta, I can't be a pussy. I'm, not, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to learn from Tom. You know, I was doing all the wrong things. I'm, I'm still... You know, in 101 of the Tom Likas thing, I haven't got up to 110 yet, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Hey, Tom. I'm still starting now. Yes. Hey, Tom. Yes. This guy, he fails one-on-one like this, man. Boy, <laughs> you, might be, you might be right about that, Juan. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Teresa on the Tom Like You Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Teresa. I'm glad you're doing this show because I listen to you a lot and I'm married. And I think everything you're saying is so true and that... People forget that when they're married, they still have to earn each other and they have to want to be with each other. Mm -hmm. And so many people I hear listening to your show, they call in and they whine and cry about it yeah. because they're fat or they're stupid. And why would anybody be with, want to be with somebody like that? With my husband, I can't think of anything that I could possibly change if I wasn't with him that I wouldn't do for him now uh -huh. if he made it so I would want to. Yes. And I think that's so critical because I think people, I always write in people's wedding cards, you know, treat each other like you do today for the rest of your life and you'll be together forever. Uh huh. And I think, you know, you have to pretend like you're dating them every week, you know. Well, you know, I here's the thing that people have to get real about. I don't care what papers you sign, the competition never ends. Exactly. People are always going to be hitting on the person you're with. The person you're with gets bored sometimes, and when they get bored, they're going to do what they would do if you were just dating them. They're going to have other people. There's no two ways about this. Well, and I also think for a lot of people, when you put a wedding ring on someone, whether they're male or female, it's like pulling a ripcord on a rubber raft. Once they, you know, get, you know, settled in with somebody, they don't think they have any responsibility to look good or do anything to earn the fact that they want to sleep with you or be with you or anything else. Right. And so I think that's so important. And I know with us, you know, we he is good looking. He could get anybody. And so in order for me to compete, I feel like I have to, and he feels the same. You know, and so I think it works really good for us, mm -hmm. and it keeps us together. We've been together since high school. We've been together for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And so it's one of those things where we have so much fun, and we don't, you know, miss out on going out and doing all the things that all of our friends do because we still do it. Excellent. Teresa, thank you. Tom, Tom Likis. 1-800-5800-TOM. Hello, Tom. How are you? Do you care, Elise? You know what? I really don't, but that's okay. I got on the air. <laughs> it's the Tom Likis Show. Like The Tom Like It Show. 1 800 5800 Tom is our telephone number. Kevin, hello. Hi. Hey. What's poppin'? What's the topic? Uh, no, I want to talk to Tom. You want to talk to Tom? Yeah. Certainly. Hang on there, will you? The Tom Like It Show. 1-800-5800-TOM with our telephone number. This is Kevin on the Tom Like It Show. Hey, Tom, what's happening? Not much, Kevin. Hey, uh, I was with the girl for about five years. Right. And, uh... She never let me smoke pot. She, I had to hide it from her. And then after uh, she broke up with me, she started smoking. Uh, see, chicks just love to tell you what to do and how to behave and how to dress and what fork to eat with. They just love doing that. Ain't that a bitch, though? It, yeah, well, or ain't she a bitch? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom, thanks a lot. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Renee on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, this R is Renee. I know, I just Renee. said that, yes. Hey, um. I was married for 10 years, and I would always have a hard time for my wife to give me a BJ. Wait, you're 29? Yeah. And you 29. were married for 10 years? How old is your yeah. child, 11? Yeah. Uh-huh. And, <laughs> and, well, the times that she would do it, she would do it so slow, and I would try to tell her the way I liked it, you know, lick the balls and lick the and everything. She wouldn't do it. After we broke up, that's all she does now, man. Oh, I'll bet she does. Oh, yeah. Now and she does everything, everything she wouldn't I, do. And she's doing I it with everyone. Do. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, that's what she does. Now. By the way, how do you know she's doing that? Are the boys reporting to you? Me. Oh, she no, tells you. No. Yeah, she tells me. What does she say? You know that stuff you wanted me to do that I wouldn't do? Now I'm doing it with other people. Does she say that? Pretty much. She oh. probably does. She doesn't say it like that, except, you know, she says she likes doing it now. But And, man, that pisses me off because all the other guys are getting everything I trained her to do. There you go. All the stuff she refused to do. Unbelievable. Renee, thank you for the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Tom at